Good morning guys, today is Thursday and once again I'm starting off the day by recording a lot of face cam footage for a new art video that I'm doing. It's actually going to be sort of a draw this again type video. It's of a Harry Potter drawing that I did about three years ago in 2015 and I did it again recently. You might have seen it on Instagram and stuff and it's just going to be a video talking about how I've improved and also giving some tips for you guys on how you can improve your artwork. So I thought of a new setup for my mic because the video that I recorded yesterday, well actually it was the day before yesterday, but in the last vlog that I did you can see that I um, did it from my vlogging camera from this camera and there was a lot of like static in there and it just had this really high pitched whine and I don't know what it was so I've thought about a new mic setup that I want to show you. So again I'm still using the DSLR, I'm not going to use the vlogging camera anymore, I'll use the DSLR and instead of having the mic attached on top of it I've decided to get it closer to my face by actually attaching my mobile sort of little tripod around the main tripod and attaching it off there so I'm it's closer to my face when I'm sitting there rather than it being higher up than me because before it was like here so it was catching the audio directly in front and obviously I'm going to be down here so it makes more sense to have it directly in front of me for better audio quality and because it's not directly attached to the top of the DSLR hopefully it won't pick up so many like mechanical sounds from the camera. After I've done all of this, what I've got to do is I need to upload that art video. I'm going to give all the footage straight to Darby to edit and then he'll give it back to me and I'll need to voice over certain bits. I've just finished doing all of the intro stuff. It went well. It took me a bit of time at the start to get into it. I was a bit sort of bad at the start but I got into it and I had a little break and then went at it again and it sounded a lot more natural. And yeah, the new setup worked really well here. It sounds nice, the audio sounds better, which is really, really good because the last one really wasn't that great. And now I want to show you actually the Harry Potter, the before and after one that I did. Here is the piece that I did in 2015. As you can see, I have improved over the years. It wasn't too bad, but there's a lot of things that I have definitely improved on uh, skill-wise. So this is the one I did in 2015 and... Here is the one that I am doing in 2018. I haven't completely finished it yet, but already you can see there is so much improvement compared to the 2015 one, especially in the contrast, in the shadows. I got the darknesses, the darknesses, the dark values in there and got it as dark as it needs to be because it's the same, it's pretty much the same photo from the same like scene. So it was like meant to be a really dark battle scene and it was, at, it, it was in the night. But as you can see here, it doesn't really look like this is set at night. It just looks like the day there isn't much harsh, dark, dramatic shadows in there. I was probably scared to do it too dark. But here I am definitely a lot more confident getting in the dark values. I am now going to have a quick lunch with Darby. I'm just going to have pot noodle, my favourite, beef and tomato. And yeah, it's just going to be a quick one because I need to get on with my Patreon stuff. Did you boil the kettle? Is it boiled? It should be boiled. Okay. Check, is it hot? Yes. Well then it's boiled. Okie dokie. Where's yours? Have you done yours? No, mine's in micro. Microwave? Oh. Darby, what you eating? <laughs> You're about to have your noodles. <laughs> Awful. I've just created the sketch for the next colour pencil portrait tutorial series for my patron and I used this pencil to actually sketch it out. It was the Putty Page Prisma colour pencil. So that's done and now what I'm going to do is just scan it so that the like sketch outline image is available for my patrons. I've just bought this scanner over to Darby's, I've got my V600 over at mine, but here I decided because I've got two, I would just put the, focus, I just put the second one over here, the V37, it's not as good, but all I need it really here for is to actually scan any sketch outline stuff that I need, I don't really need it to sketch final images. The next task that I've got to do is package up those prints that I made the other day because I was waiting for these display sleeves to come as I ran out of them and I only realised once I actually started to make the prints. Thank you Darby. No worries. Say hello. Hello. So I was just <laughs> editing my video. 
So yeah, I was waiting until these came and now that they've come I can sign my prints and create the thank you cards. I'm going to use a really pretty gold gel pen for the thank you cards to make them really nice. And then I've got to package them. I've got to cut down all of these little cardboard bits to make some backing for these. And yeah, I've got to do that and then we can take them over to the post office. Hopefully it will still be open. I'll just show you guys how I do this process. Got a nice overhead fancy shot. So you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. I've got five of the prints to actually send off today. I've got to write a few thank you cards. I think four thank you cards. Because four of the prints are for patrons. One is from an Etsy order. I finished writing out all of the thank you cards and signing the prints so now it's time to actually put them in the display sleeves. One thing that I don't like about these new display sleeves is the fact that they've got this like, I don't know, what's the word, like these little dashed bits all along the side. I don't really like that but it's not a big deal. I'm just going to take one print and one thank you card and put them in each sleeve. So now I've got the print and the thank you card in there. I just quickly check everything over before I then seal it. I give it a bit of room at the end. And then I just seal it down. I press in the middle and then swipe towards the edge. And there we go. And then I just do that with each of these. Okay, so now they are all packaged up, all finished, all ready to be put into their envelopes and sent off. What I need to do now is cut down one of these each. I've got these just cardboard, really firm bits. So I'm just, I've just cut down the first one and now what I do is I just slot it in and they just go right in. All the way to the bottom and now that is just really 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 secure and I can just go ahead and put the prints in there now and now that that's in all I do is rip off this little sticky bit and pull it down secure that and then all I need to do is write please do not bend on here and then on the other side just the actual postal address. I've just finished packaging up all five of these prints and I'm really getting through my to-do list today. Here it is. As you can see we've got quite a few things ticked off already. I'll then need to upload the art video. Dov is just working on it over there. He's working really hard on it. I've got a few more things ticked off the list. I finished editing the art video while Darby edited it. To be honest, I just did the last few voiceover bits. So I've edited the art video. It's voiced over and it's just exporting. I got so excited because it said it only needed four minutes to export. And then the time slowly crept up and now it's on 17 minutes. And look, it's still going up. Mm. Here's a little look at the thumbnail for the video. Why is it so blue? Look how blue that is. I don't know why that's so blue. What but Hmm? Face. No, just everywhere. It's just slightly off. But anyway, guys, that is the thumbnail. You'll be able to see it. It's on my channel now. I'll, le I'll leave a card so you can check out the video. It's doing well already. We're just responding to some comments on the video. Anyway, guys, as always, I just want to end off the vlog with a couple of your questions. And because I didn't do a vlog yesterday and I didn't answer any questions in the vlog before that, I'm going to answer a few more questions for you guys today. And the first one is, I love it when we see your dog. Do you like cats or are you only a dog person? Well, to be honest, I'm not even really a dog person. It's not like, I don't really particularly love cats or love dogs. I don't love like a certain animal in particular. I like dogs more than I like cats. I'm, I really am not a cat person. I don't really like cats. But I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a real, real dog person either. I mean, they can be cute and I, I like them, but I don't love dogs. If anything, I'm more of a hedgehog person. I'd really, really love a hedgehog. I think they are so, so cute. 
The next question is, what is the goal you want to reach on your main channel next since you are now at 200k? Well, obviously I want to keep growing the channel. It's important to me to keep that going, to keep growing that. And the best way to do that for me is focusing on creating even better content and even more valuable content. But for me, my goals aren't really aimed at how many subscribers I want to get. It's more in terms of what I want to do. So one of the main goals for this year is to focus on making more online courses for you guys. And that's something that I want to build. I want to build and make more products to sell and actually come up with things like tangible products with all of my information and drawing skills, the main techniques that I want to teach all in one place place packaged in one course and I want to do a series of courses for the different things that I teach. So courses is a main focus for me at the moment and also so is Patreon. Patreon is always one of my main focuses of the month because it's important for me to make sure that I'm always fulfilling those rewards each month. I have a lot of tutorials that I have to make for my patrons and that is important for me because I really do want to keep that growing. It is cr growing at an incredible rate at the moment and I'm so so happy and grateful for that support and so it's something that I want to keep pushing and keep growing just to see how much I can grow it because I do offer a lot of information at a really really great price a lot of people say why do I offer so much information so cheap but for me I want to allow anyone to be able to afford that information and because Patreon you know there's not a limited amount of people that can pledge to you I'm going more for mass rather Rather than just having a few patrons at a ridiculously high price I'd rather charge less but then give it and but then have lots more people subscribe to it because they can afford it and that'd be great I want a lot of people to get the information that that, that will be useful for them and so patreon is another main priority YouTube is just going to be focusing on creating better content and titling it and packaging it better really the next question is, you are a really good artist, are you as good at drawing digitally? Digitally, yeah that's right. Um, I've never actually tried digital drawing, it's something that I really really want to have a go at. I would love to get a nice tablet, a nice graphics tablet and have a go at digital. It's something that I'm really interested in and I'd like to get into more graphic design. Like I really do enjoy creating thumbnails and designing stuff like that. And so I think it's something that I definitely want to get more into. The next question is, I was wondering what your regulations are for reference photos for commissions. Do you only accept them if they are high quality pictures? I don't do commissions, I don't enjoy doing commissions and so I don't take them on, I don't need to take them on so it's not something that I actually am doing. But if I am, or if I was to take on commissions, what I would do is make sure that I'm using a really, really high quality reference image. I did do commissions in the past and if ever someone sent me a reference photo that I knew I wouldn't be able to create a really good high standard piece of art from, then I simply would refuse that and ask for a better one. And most of the time they would actually just send a better image and just get a new one because a lot of people that are trying to get you to draw their artwork they're not an artist themselves so they don't understand what an artist actually needs to do a great piece of artwork from they just take their phone take a picture normally of their animal or something if they want to have a pet portrait they'll just take a, a photo like that and it won't be good quality but they don't know any better and i really recommend not trying to actually do it from that reference image just ask for a better one. It's not worth all of the hassle trying to come up and make up details because you simply can't see all of the details. If when you zoom in on that image to the size you're drawing it, if you can't see every little detail and definitely enough detail that you need to actually draw that, then ask for a better quality image. And if they can't provide one, then I would turn it down because I would rather turn it down and lose that commission than take it on take the reference photo and not be able to create a piece of art that's up to my standard. Anyway guys, that is it for today's vlog. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye everybody.